Swiss Herbal. Coming to you from Queen and John at City Line with Marilyn Dennis. show with our looking good special we got three experts we sure do we've got dr steve mulholland here a service cosmetic surgeon a couple things i want you to do i want you to get your pen and pencil out because and paper because steve's going to talk about a variety of things like you'll take any question any and all questions, any and all questions looking you your best looking your best okay and then we have a show with you not this Friday, but the following Friday, yes. a whole hour with you. So there we go. 416-870-7716 or 1-800-295-LINE. we got lots going on today. I believe we have a good-looking audience. Yes. yes, we do. And we're ready to roll. The first take. Heather Muir had a dent in her forehead. I'm not kidding you. She hit. It's something that gets deeper and deeper the older she gets. So she went to see Dr. Steve Mulholland to see what could be done about it. Watch this. Heather, how long have you had the dent for? I've had the dent uh, since my early 20s, and I just noticed it forming then, but it's gotten deeper and deeper and deeper, and now I just can't stand it. So, Dr. Mahal, what do you see? I see a, a young lady who, in her very early 20s, really didn't have much of a dent at all, but she had a hereditary predisposition. Her parents had deep, deep furrows in their forehead and even in her early 20s you see a mild line forming where you wouldn't normally. Once we got to her early 30s she started to have a very very noticeable uh, crevice mm. from overactive frown lines. Again a hereditary predisposition. Her parents had it, she got it. Doubly bad. Now we have a young lady who in her mid 30s even when she's not frowning has a permanent indentation almost to the point where when you look at it, it almost looks like a scar or a bit of a deformity because she's been frowning so long she's left a change in the collagen of her skin, an indentation. So what are you going to do about it? Our plan is to first of all put those frown muscles to sleep, to use a little bit of Botox, a little paralyzing substance injected only into the muscles of the frown so she can't do that anymore but even when we do that we won't have corrected her indentation so we're going to take substances from her own body some fat lay some fat in the base of that of that deep furrow to soften it and then take a little bit of injectable filler some hyloform or some article to give her as smooth a possible result and that is what i would anticipate she should be able to see at the end of our procedure Dr. Mahal, now it's the Botox. Yes, I've wiped her skin clean with alcohol and we're going to put the Botox into her very active frown lines. Heather, give me a good frown. Very active muscles. I'm going to insert little Botox on either side of her frown line and that will go into the muscle and put it to sleep. Now Heather, it takes a few days for this Botox to take effect. Three to five days. During this period of time, I don't want you to rub your forehead and I want you to try and avoid excessive exercise where you get a lot of pressure, back pressure. So no straining, no lifting, no um, physical exercise for about two or three days. I'm gonna hold a little pressure there not to minimize any risk of bruising. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do the other side. Ah, uh, you should have heard the camera crew going, ow! Everybody has different pain thresholds, so. Well, interesting, your camera crew's all male, but I didn't hear any women go out. Yeah, they're going like this, and we were like this, in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are just, you know, all of her. Come on, you guys. Okay, let's talk about genes. Her, this dent in her forehead is hereditary. It plays a big role in the, the fact that she has it, but the fact that something can be done is terrific. Yeah, it, interestingly, there are pictures of Heather's parents, and we were kind not to show them today, but they had mm -hmm. big, deep grooves in their early 30s as well. Yeah. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. we can blame our, or fortunately, blame our parents for the uh, ravages of age. When you look at uh, the gruesome consequences of growing old, mm -hmm. usually you can look at your mother, it's the mother's sometimes. mother, your yeah. father, and you can see those jowls, those cheeks cheeks, those eyelids that they've passed on to you. Or the nose. Or the nose. Or yeah. the nose. Because the no is it true that the nose and the ears keep growing? 
Uh, they do uh, mature somewhat in terms of width, but yeah. their overall length and proportion is generally fixed by about 18 to 20 years old. About 18 to 20 years old. But the skin on top of it can change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you get sometimes the WC Fields nose later in life. And yeah, sometimes yeah. the ear gets more cauliflower. Yeah, in yeah. Person. So when, when someone is not happy with what they have, do you recommend that they bring pictures in from their parents as well, as, as well as, you know, pictures from their youth, just to I see always, how much it's accentuated? To some extent, I always use um, the patient's own pictures from when they were 25, 35, yeah. and 45 to try and create a beautiful version of themselves. Okay. Because after surgery, the last thing you want is someone to say, wow, you look different. Who did your facelift? You want someone to say, you look great, you look refreshed, you look uh, rested. Did you do something with your hair? Uh, yes, that's I did what personally. No, 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 yes. you did. But that's what people do, just, just something yeah. with your hair. Yeah, and, and, and if you can yeah. attribute it to that, that's wonderful. And yeah. usually that's what should happen. Yeah. And then if you bring in pictures of the parents, you can show them that that's who to blame right there. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we can't trade our parents in. Unfortunately, no. the damage is done. No. And it happened at the time of conception. No, we love parents. We love parents. And I know I'm going to hand my son down a couple of things. You can't see it right now because I've had them all changed. <laughs> but he will inherit some of those things. But the, the, the point is that's the kind of research yeah. that you do. Things yeah. are hereditary. You, you have to accept that. But what, what's remarkable is things can uh, be modified, which is terrific. Yeah, and especially, for example, the segment today with yeah. Heather. Yeah. Um, if we can, it used to be five years ago, we'd jump right into surgery. Yes. Now, generally, I talk about a stepladder, and the first four or five rungs on that stepladder have no knives involved, which appeals to many patients, because- That is interesting. You know, very few people in Canada are gonna have a facelift. Right. Uh, but everyone wants beautiful skin. Yeah. Everyone wants to have beautiful skin. Okay, well, here we go. Here's Steve at work on Heather's surgery. We want you to watch, uh, watch this, but not the cameraman. Don't, you'll get queasy. Yeah. And it's time for your surgery. Are you nervous, excited? I'm, I'm both, I'm both. I'm, I am nervous. I had a little bit of a trouble sleeping last night, but now I'm excited, now that I'm here. Oh, so, yeah. so how does it look so well, far? Okay, well, since the Botox, I love being on camera with no makeup. <laughs> um, since the Botox, it looks a lot better, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do with the article, yeah. Uh, all right. Dr. Mulholland, what are we looking at here? What we're looking at, Patrick, is the beginning of some purified fat. The first step today, we're going to take some fat from the patient's thigh, an area where she doesn't want it and doesn't need it. We're going to purify that fat, and we're going to inject it under the depths of her forehead furrow. We're going to add a little bit of Articol to give her a nice, smooth appearance. And we put a little freezing in so she doesn't feel this, and we move back and forth, and the fat gradually accumulates in the syringe. What you're looking at is the creation of the purified fat cell. And if you look at this, there is no more blood, there is no more serum, just thousands and thousands of little fat cells. In this purified form, when we inject it with gentle micro fat techniques, we can get those little fat cells to live with great predictability. And that's why this will likely last this young lady for years. Now the article, this Patrick is the article. This is the second injectable substance we are going to put in uh, this patient's furrow. I do this very, very superficially um, inside the superficial depths of the skin uh, to add a little bit of, of steam pressing or a little bit of smoothing on top of where the fat went. And now we'll lay down some fat right there. Some article on top of the fat right there. You have no wrinkle anymore, completely smooth. Special Dr. Steve Mulholland is right here, and now it's time to see the result. Here's how Heather looks after it's all done. So where are we now, Dr. Mulholland? Well, as you can see, Patrick, uh, Heather's had a wonderful result. She's completed her microfat, her article, and the photofacials. And as you can see, she's had an astounding, well over 90% improvement in her rather deep frown line. So what does she need to do to maintain this? What I'd recommend at this point is about three times a year, every four months, Heather would come in for some Botox. The Botox would put to sleep that tendency to want to crunch the skin. And that should preserve this nice, smooth result she's got. Perhaps some good medical skincare products and some photo facials to continue uh, to enhance and improve upon this already lovely skin that she's displaying. And as you can see, she's cut her hair and she's for the first time showed off her forehead rather than hit it. What do you think? I love it. I love it. It's the best thing I've ever done for myself. I just, I feel so good when I look in the mirror. It, it's a massive, massive difference. Sure. Okay.
we're gonna we're gonna put Heather's phone number up so if you're not doing anything Saturday night. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel great. I used to whenever I looked in the mirror, it was the first thing I would focus on is my dent. And whenever I got pictures back, I would just look and look at my dent. Yeah. And now I feel great. See, the funny thing is, you and I worked on the foster parent special together right. a couple of years ago uh, for Foster Parents Canada, and I'd never really talked to Heather that much before. And happy, happy. But with that, <laughs> you had like this furrowed brow kind it's of. It's true. And what people are saying to me now is, you just look more relaxed. Are you, you know, what are you yeah. doing? You look stress-free, you're more relaxed. Yeah, and that was his point, right? That you, exactly. you don't know what it exactly. is. Exactly, yeah. right. Well, so, so uh, did you like the fact that when you first started, he said, I can't work out for a couple of days? That kind of gives you an excuse not to work yes. out. Yeah, I got to rest. I can't yes. work out for a couple of I'm just days. going to have to recline. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, I think you look fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. It really, it really, it suits your personality. Okay, so. Well, I want to talk a little bit about maintenance, and one of the words, and we're going to talk about it a, a week from Friday, because you're on for the full hour. Can you guys give me the date from a week from Friday, just in case I, you know, 26. make it? On the 26th, he's here, July 26th for the full hour. That's Dr. Steve Mulholland. Just quickly, because we'll talk about it more on the 26th, a photo facials. What, you know, you said that was part of her maintenance. What does that mean? Uh, Photofacial is taking light, gentle pulsed light right. and uh, radio frequency waves and passing them through the skin so that we don't uh, create any downtime. Uh, it's easy to take some lasers and give you a lot of weeping and crusting and oozing, uh, but the photofacial is designed to be done about every three weeks. You do four or five sessions and you really can turn back the clock on So your what day. is it? It just takes, uh, repairs any of like inconsistencies in the yes. skin? It, it repairs like broken capillaries. Yeah. Yeah. veins, age spots, sunspots, pores, yeah. and we do it for the whole face or the decolletage of the chest yeah. or the hands. And it really just turns back the time on your skin. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those first three or four step ladder rungs that you can grab onto while trying to look your best without jumping into an operative experience. And how often would you have a photo facial? Because, I mean, you're glowing, Heather. That's always good to do, isn't it? It's good to glow. No, she looks great. She is a, a glower. She yes. is a glower. Well, it comes from, comes from within. I know that's that. Right. But, but, well, we're but, working on internal photo facials, too, <laughs> but that's usually the I psychologist. Could, yeah, I give some gift certificates to some people <laughs> I know. But, uh, but, but, you know, just taking what you have on the skin, the imperfections on the skin, is it every once a but month? But once a month. Yeah, but once a month you come in yeah. and the treatment's performed. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes okay. and you go back to work. Okay, very good. All right. Well, listen, again, well done. Thanks for letting us follow you because we're nosy people here at City Line. Yeah. 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 A little, little intrusive, just a little. Yeah, we're always in your face. <laughs> Sarah is on the phone, and you have a question for Dr. Steve. Go ahead. I do. Um, I have uh, bumpy, raised scars on my upper back and um, my front, and that's from, I guess, adult acne. Okay. Or when I was like 21, 22. Yeah. Um, is there anything I can do to uh, reduce them or bring them down? And um, would it be expensive? Like what, what sort of cost would that entail? We'd do like a ballpark, let's see if we can do a ballpark figure. Well, Sarah, you're suffering from a very common phenomenon, either on the body, like the back, and a lot of males have that, or on the face. It's the um, ongoing ravages of acne, which is scars and usually discoloration. The first thing is get the acne under control. See your family doctor, if you've been on topicals and oral medications, try that. There's yeah, a that's new... all gone, actually. Okay. It's... Some patients out there don't. They should try that or get on something called a clear light, which passes light through your skin and kills the bacteria that lead to acne. And then you don't need to get into, into some of the Accutane type medications. So mm -hmm. once it's controlled, you're left with scars and discoloration. Right. Treatments like the photofacial will bend, blend any redness that's residual. And if you have great big craters that create an irregularity, uh, then you might be looking at some fillers to plump up the base of the crater. And uh, the next step would be something a little more invasive, like resurfacing of the skin. But usually for those first two or three rungs on a ladder, you can get about a 30 to 50% improvement. And you'll probably be looking at anywhere between $500 and $3,000 to, depending on how wide an area is involved, uh, to get that improvement. Oh, that's great. Thanks for your call, Sarah. Well, Dr. C is going to stay with us, and Derek Selby is going to join us. We're going to talk about complexion when we return. Stay with us.